Hi folks, sorry to use more puppy footage, but I have been pressed for time. I have a ton of things to get done before the snow flies. This video is a continuation of the last video about my routine, and I gave information to the timetable to things, but not a lot of reason why. One thing I should have included in the last video, and it's an important one, I made sure to put it in the title of the last video, but failed to explain it, and that is a working dog is a happy dog. When I was talking about socializing the dog in public, I emphasized preserving attentiveness. I explained why from the point of protection, but it does one more very important thing. It preserves and allows the dog to do a job in the spirit of what it was bred to do. Putting a side pack on a working breed guardian and saying my dog has a job he'll now be fulfilled is, well, ridiculous and just exercise at best. There is no comparison in the fulfillment of the dog's working desires during or after the walk. I'm going to talk more about this a little later on. Anyway, on to other things. How I train, the time the dog spend with the family, in their crates, and out in the yard all help build my version of the complete dog. I'm going to talk briefly about those and a bit about guarding and protection behavior. Before I get on with it, thanks to everyone who hit the like button, it's very much appreciated. I'm going to start with time spent with the family. Besides teaching the dog how to be a good citizen indoors, it's about hanging out and being part of the pack. Without this bond, they may never feel the need to defend the family as a pack. Sticking indoors, let's go to crate time. There are a lot of good reasons to get your dog used to the crate, and I'm just going to hit on a couple of important ones. First, the dog needs to learn and maintain some independence and have downtime. If they don't, things like separation anxiety and possibly other unhealthy attachments will rear their ugly head. The next good reasons are to keep them safe and your house intact while they learn to be good indoor citizens. Time in the yard. I'm going to start here with talking about family guardians and hopefully I don't get too many thumbs down with what I'm going to say because it goes against what many think about guard dogs. When we think about guard and protection dogs, most people think of brave, dominant and fearless animals. The two former can definitely be true for sure, but the latter maybe not so much. Unless your dog is like a game bred dog looking at things like their prey, the underlying cause of their protective and guarding instinct, at least initially, is fear. Fear is not a bad thing, excess fear is what you want to avoid. Just because your dog has an element of fear does not mean the dog isn't brave. Bravery is what you do in the face of fear. Most guardian breeds have high fight drive, meaning in the face of fear, they are more likely to be brave and engage and stay in a fight. Guarding and protection is like the dog's adrenaline sport, like skydiving would be for humans. If we go too far with the dog and removing all suspicions with people, we remove the desire and fulfillment from playing the game. If we remove the suspicion of anything bad happening when jumping out of a plane, skydivers would probably just sit back and enjoy the view from the plane. As for the dominant part, a truly dominant dog is as rare as hen's teeth, and honestly, that's a good thing. Dealing with a truly dominant dog is a lot of work and takes a lot of skills. Lots of dogs have dominant parts to their personality, like being food aggressive or resource guarding a toy, but a truly dominant dog is just not about claiming resources. They're about challenging authority and imposing their will. Not a fun scenario in a large working breed. When it comes to dogs guarding their property, what we see as guarding behavior in the immature dog, like I said, I think it really starts from the aspect of fear. Because of this, I consider yard time during the second fear stage to be very important. The dog is going to be hypersensitive to the surroundings and dealing with all kinds of perceived threats. This is not like socializing the dog out in public, where the dog gains confidence, meaning has less suspicion, aka less fear, just because nothing bad hasn't happened. In the yard and in the house, the dogs tend to view this zone as a place of no retreat, no surrender, and typically respond to suspicion with barking and other aggressive displays. Now confidence gets built around their response to fending off the threat, not because nothing has happened. I want the dog to get a ton of wins during this time, and they will, because almost everything they perceive as a threat isn't. This gives the dog's confidence, which becomes the backbone to guarding the yard as a resource as they mature. You want a vigilant guard? Have them out there in this phase. At the same time the dog is gaining confidence, I want to tamp down any excessive behavior. Just like in the house, the dog has to learn yard manners. We do not want to let the dog build drives unchecked. Anyway, on to training. Training is probably the one aspect of owning a dog that can send you down some deep dark rabbit holes further than any other thing. 
The training method you use, I think, is the one thing that can shut down the defensive drive to defend members of the pack the most if you're trying to work with it in a natural way. If I approach training from the aspect of this is where I have to exert myself physically as the alpha, forcing compliance and showing the dog who is boss, they will never feel the need to physically protect me as a member of the pack. Till maybe, and that's a maybe, after something bad has happened. If I'm effective in breaking down and teaching a behavior, the need for corrections, discomfort and force should be automatically limited. One thing I do not do in prepping the family guard dog is any kind of man work. No agitation, no bite suit or sleeve, and this is the reason why. Outside of having a dog with behavioral issues, most dogs have a natural inhibition to bite people. I call it natural discretion. Their behavior typically is to escalate from display into physical confrontation if needed. I'm not going to mess with that doing bite work. There is just too much downside. If I was building a dog for sport or attack on command, that would be different. But that's not what I require in my dogs. The last thing I want to touch on for training in this video is impulse control. This is one of the most important skills I teach my dog. Every command has an element of impulse control and that's part of the reason I train often. And when I can't, I include it in their play. I want to test impulse control in a highly tempting way as often as I can. Well, that's it for now. Thanks for watching everybody.